Good afternoon on this Wednesday, the 14th of March. This is just a brief 28storms.com slash cyclone update on developing Cyclone Lua. First off, this is the latest forecast from the Bureau of Meteorology. We are forecasting Lua to make a turn more toward the east here over the next 24 hours. And as we work our way into the day on Friday, the storm is expected to intensify into a severe cyclone, that being Category 3 intensity, and as we can see, we already have cyclone watches in effect for much of the Pilbara. Meanwhile, the latest forecast from the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center is rather similar. They are forecasting the storm to take a turn more toward the southeast while intensifying all the way up until the time the center crosses the coast. The forecast peak intensity is 80 knots, with a landfall occurring just east of Port Hedland. The latest enhanced infrared satellite animation reveals that the cyclone is still somewhat disorganized and still within its infancy stages. However, as we switch over to the latest visible satellite animation, we can quickly see during the end of this frame that the cyclone is continuing to intensify, and at the very end it looks as though it's beginning to develop an inner core, and it looks as though a more steady rate of intensification will soon begin within the next 12 to 24 hours. The regional water vapor animation also confirms that the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere are becoming more conducive for a steady tropical cyclone intensification. We see the signs of a developing upper level ridge located directly above Lua, and the southern outflow channel is becoming less restricted with time, and we can see this by some of the outflow to the south, and there is no restriction of the equatorward outflow jet to the north of the cyclone center. Switching over to the latest wind shear streamline pattern, again the winds are really becoming much lighter here along the Pilbara coast and into the southeast Indian Ocean with shear values generally ranging below 10 to 15 knots. As a result, nearly all of the intensity forecast model guidance is showing continued intensification all the way until the time the center makes landfall. In fact, many of the following models are likely being too conservative. The overall track scenario remains largely unchanged. Starting off at the initial time, we see that the ridging is still present here, located just to the west of Western Australia, but this ridge is beginning to weaken, thus the reason why our cyclone is not going to be moving very much over the next 24 to 48 hours. But as we go into day one, and especially day two, the increasing troughiness here coming out of Perth and moving into Western Australia will begin to influence the overall steering of our cyclone and the trough will fully capture the cyclone as we go into the midday part of Saturday and that is the overall time frame that we think a cyclone landfall is most likely. Upon closer inspection the latest forecast from the GFS model is showing a landfall here to the east of Port Hedland and well to the southwest of Broome by approximately 11 a.m. Saturday morning and the latest ECMWF model run is showing a similar landfall location just roughly three hours later at around 2 p.m. on Saturday. However, interest in this region should keep in mind that the weather is going to quickly begin to go downhill much earlier than the timing of the center making its arrival. In fact, the weather is likely going to begin deteriorating as early as Friday afternoon and especially into the overnight hours on Friday. So it is best to prepare for this upcoming cyclone landfall as early as possible, especially by Thursday. Try to have everything wrapped up and finalized. And all interest here from Karatha eastward all the way to Broome should still be closely monitoring the cyclone. Even if the storm does stay on the current track, you will still likely face some rather significant wind gusts and some potentially heavy rainfall. Areas along and north of the Great Northern Highway can anticipate Category 3 conditions with the outside chance of this system possibly even intensifying to Category 4 shortly before landfall. It should also be noted that the highest surge values are traditionally located just east of the cyclone center in these circumstances or similar circumstances as those will be the locations receiving the highest onshore winds. It is also worth noting that our partners over at X Weather Live and OzCycloneChasers.com are moving into Western Australia to chase this developing cyclone and you can check up with all of their recent chase updates at their forum, just go ahead and click on introducing OzCycloneChasers.com and they have an active thread on Cyclone Lua. So thank you once again for viewing our videos here at 28storms.com slash cyclone. Check back frequently for more video updates.